Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Trolls Road Church. I am so glad that you have joined us this morning. That tune is, is pretty catchy, I gotta be honest. I am going to miss that one day when we no longer have, maybe we should use that as our prelude music. We'll get our worship team to, uh, to learn the chords. Um, I am glad that you're here this morning. It's a beautiful day outside, and it's a chance for us as a church to gather. I'm just looking online here and seeing all of the names that are joining and that's not quite the same as seeing your faces, but even your names are bringing a smile as I, as I flip through them. It's just so good. Uh, there's uh, a lot happening in our church family, and, and of course, later today, we have our AGM. Uh, if you are a member, we are inviting you to join us. Uh, the meeting starts at 3, but I would ask that you join us at 2.45 if you can, so we can sort through some of the logistics, make sure everyone is on schedule and ready to go at 3 o'clock, and looking forward to not just a business meeting, but celebrating the goodness of God this past year and looking forward to what he has in store for us in the coming year. Next week, next week is March the 14th, and it is uh, Daylight Savings, I believe. But more importantly, we are inviting you to join us in this room, if you are able, for worship. We are going to be opening the building up on Sunday morning, and we can have a third of our capacity. So you can pre-register online this week and uh, get your seat saved so you can be here in person. If you're not able to be here in person yet, that's okay. We will continue to stream the service, and we are still the body of Christ coming together uh, if some people are here physically, others digitally, it'll still be a celebration. We look forward to that next week. Today's service is a special service. You can see that we're going to be celebrating communion, and that's always significant, but it is also our Covenant Sunday, and you'll be hearing about that through the morning. But we are going to celebrate the covenant that God has made possible through Jesus this morning. And we are going to renew some vows, some covenant vows that we want to make to God as we look forward to another year of ministry and another year of God's goodness, not just for our benefit, but so that we can share his love with those around us. Yesterday was a pretty big day. There were a few birthdays that were celebrated, and I just wanted to wish Lois and Dulcie specifically happy birthday, and uh, we are so thankful to have you as part of the Trolls Road family and hope you had a great celebration yesterday. As we transition this morning into our time of worship, I'd like to start by going over our verse of the year. And so on the screen, our verse should be there. I'm going to invite you to read this with me, or if you have it memorized, let's say this together. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Mark 1, 15. What a great truth and what a great promise. A great way to start our service this morning. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus 
the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them by out of Jesus, uh, uh, sorry, out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people.
Thank you, worship team. That is a great version of an incredible hymn. And uh, what, what wonderful worship. What a great way to set up our, our service today and, and as well the, the meeting later today as we just celebrate all the good things that God has done and the invitation for us to be part of that and to be in a covenant relationship with him. Um, you know, it, it's been tough, this pandemic. We've missed out on a lot of things. Something I missed out on that I didn't, I didn't realize I would miss is, is bowling. Um, because I'm not a good bowler and I don't bowl that often, but I think it's just driving by on the highway, that bowling alley on the 401. I thought, I'd like to go bowling. I'd like to take my girls bowling because there's nothing like standing there, staring down the lane and, and channeling your, your inner Fred Flintstone. And uh, Someone should stop that before, it, thank you. Um, and, and that moment you release the ball, there is that sense of confidence and excitement followed very quickly in my case by concern, occasionally panic, even horror, because the ball did something I wasn't expecting. And you, you kind of use your body language to try and help it, but it's veering off in one direction. Now, when I was a younger man and I would go bowling, if that happened... Inevitably, the ball would end up in the gutter. And all of my efforts, no matter how artistically beautiful and all of the good intentions I had, are rendered useless. But today, thanks to all of the technology and science and the internet and all of these incredible advancements, we now have something called bumper bowling. And bumper bowling is where they put bumpers in the gutters to prevent the ball from veering off course and ending up in the useless position of guttering down the lane. This morning, I'd like to offer for your consideration the idea that every organization, whether they realize it or not, has something called core values. And one of the ways to look at these core values is that they offer bumpers. They offer protection to keep us headed in the right direction and staying on course, even if our beautiful artistic expression and our good intentions result in something that did not look the way we thought it would. These bumpers steer us down the lane and might even knock down a few pins. 
our uh, church board is, is reading a book uh, called Institutional Intelligence. And uh, as we've been going through this book, considering uh, the institution of the church, the DNA of the church, the author says there is no such thing as a generic institution. Each organization has a unique identity, calling, and purpose, a reason for being. Institutional vitality depends on finding and living with clarity precisely at this point. Who are we? What is our purpose, our mission, our calling? It's not only important to know what we are trying to do, but why we are doing it and how we are doing it. Our church has a mission statement, and and you might see it on the screen there. It says to share God's love and give him glory. Now, this is a mission statement that other churches might be able to to have as their mission statement as well, because it's very biblical, it's very simple. But the way that it is applied and lived out with clarity is unique to our church at Charles Road, because we are unique. We are in Curtis. We are a free Methodist church. We have a unique history. We have a unique group of people with unique gifts and unique abilities and passions. And because of that, God has called us to do something unique. So how we implement and live out our mission statement is guided by core values, or what I like to call holy bumpers, that keep us on track and prevent us from veering into something that would be useless or potentially even dangerous. Now, this morning, as I go through these, I'm not going to go through each of them with uh, great detail, but I wanted to highlight a a couple of words out of each of our core value statements. And and I would encourage you to, to think about these, to consider these, to reflect on these as they relate both biblically and experientially. Because it's great if we can see them in the Bible, but if we can't figure out how to live them out, well, then we're definitely going to get stuck. But if we know how to live them out, but they're, they're not really obvious in the Bible, then maybe we've got the wrong core values. So this morning, uh, I'd like to suggest these five core values provide both experiential and biblical application. The first is the penultimate core value, and that is a relationship with Jesus. We value our relationship with Jesus lived out through daily interaction, passionate worship, and faithful obedience. We're certainly not the only church that would include this as a core value, if not the primary core value. But I'd like to suggest what makes this significant is it's our relationship with Jesus that is key. It's not just knowing about Jesus, talking about Jesus, singing about Jesus. Being in a relationship with Jesus, that is the value. And that's what we desire, not only for ourselves, but for other people, both in our church and in our community. The way that we describe this relationship, and again, we're not going to deal with the whole statement, but there's two words I want you to consider. One is passionate. Now, it talks about passionate worship, and and I hope uh, I was thoroughly enjoying our worship this morning. I could really sense the presence of God. But it's not just about our worship as it relates to music or those momentary instances of worship. It's living a life of worship. And when we do that, it needs to be expressed with passion. There needs to be an enthusiasm. Now, all of us are different. So the way that you express your enthusiasm might look differently than the way I would do it. But if we're not passionate about our relationship with Jesus, then we're missing what the Bible teaches about what a relationship with Jesus truly looks like. But it's not just passion. It's not just this enthusiasm and excitement. There's also that other phrase and word, faithful obedience or faithful. That idea of one foot after the other, the journey, in it for the long haul. Eugene Peterson has a wonderful phrase, a long obedience in the same direction. That idea of faithfulness in the now, in the moment, but also for the rest of time. And when you combine faithfulness with passion, you have a dynamic relationship. And that's what Jesus wants to have with you. And that's what we as a church want to celebrate and value. A dynamic relationship with Jesus, marked by faithfulness, marked by passion. In Acts chapter 4, it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven by which people must be saved. It's a relationship with Jesus that makes all the difference. 
And so we spend a lot of time looking at the teaching of Jesus, what he said. We take a lot of time looking at the life and example of Jesus, looking at what he did. And we spend a lot of time considering the truth of Jesus and what that means for our salvation and for our eternal life. That's our first core value. The second core value is spiritual transformation. We value personal spiritual transformation lived out through biblical discipleship and the power of the Holy Spirit. This says that we value change, that we accept God's plan for us as a church and as individuals is this ongoing change, this ongoing transformation. And while it might seem like I am not changing because I am confident and faith, and my faith is rock solid in God, that faith will change as we are transformed, as we understand our faith better, as we understand God better as a church, as individuals. So actually, we should be celebrating the transformation that helps us become more like Jesus. That phrase discipleship sometimes gets pinholed a little bit, that discipleship is a program or a study or a group. And while those things can certainly help, if you look at the life of Jesus or even the whole testimony of Scripture, discipleship is something that happens in many different ways. But it happens anywhere where people are open and receptive to the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. That certainly can be in a Bible study or in a group setting or in a, a planned uh, process with different steps. But it doesn't have to be exclusively that way. However, it is intentional. It's looking around for the work of the Spirit in our lives and asking how we can participate and cooperate with that. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we read, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Certainly, if you are a Christian, a follower of Jesus this morning, at some point in your life, you were radically transformed from being spiritually dead to being spiritually alive through the, through the work of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. But after that transformation happens, there is this ongoing transformation as we become more and more like Jesus. And that's what we want to be committed to as a church. Change, transformation, towards the greater goal of becoming like Jesus in ways that will honor God. Our third core value is the church. We value the church lived out through wholehearted belonging, gift-based serving, and authentic relationships. Um, this is a hard one to keep to a sentence because there are so many different aspects we could talk about but I like the phrasing that includes the idea of belonging to. Church is not something we go to. And we've learned that this past year. As we have not been able to physically go to a place, as much as that would be great, we understand that that in and of itself is not the church. That belonging to the church, that we have a sense of ownership, not in a bad way, it's mine so I can do what I want, ownership in the sense that I value it and I want to invest in it and I want to make it better and do whatever I can using my gifts, using my abilities, using my treasure, whatever it takes to enhance what God is doing at Trolls Road. And we see that in the lives of so many people at Trolls Road that they, they take ownership of this place and want to serve and give and do whatever they can so this place can be a lighthouse in the community. Something wonderful happens as we are serving alongside other people, as we are belonging to this group. We connect with other people in the group and great friendships are developed. There's lots of opportunities to develop godly relationships at Trolls Road even now. We have a wonderful uh, opportunity for kids and uh, some, some older members of our congregation. And when I say old, I mean old like me, potentially. So I hope I didn't offend anybody. But we have this pen pal thing going on. And some kids are writing to people in the church who are, who are adults, and adults are writing back to them. They're developing a godly friendship, not based on being in the same demographic, based on the fact that they belong 
to Trolls Road Church. On the worship team, you get to see the final product, um, which is probably best. But on Thursday nights when we practice or before the service, we have a lot of fun. We enjoy our relationships with one another, and the relationships have gotten better as we have served alongside each other. And you see this in so many different ways. Belonging to a church and serving in a church is a great way to build godly relationships that might have very little in common except that we are united in Christ. In 1 Corinthians 12, it says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, all its many parts form one body, and so it is with Christ. You know, the truth is we need you because you are unique. You have gifts and abilities and passions that only you have And Trolls Road is incomplete without those things and without you. But you know what's also true? You need us. You need a church family, a church home. You need the body of Christ as a significant part of your life. And so the church is incredibly valuable to us. Fourth, we value all people lived out through generous compassion and gospel-infused relationships in our community and around the world. If you look at the life of Jesus, you see compassion pouring out of him at every turn. As you read the scriptures and you see in the Old Testament, God having compassion on people who were very frustrating and were very unreliable, and yet God's compassion trumps some of the logical reactions and responses that you would expect in a relationship like that. The compassion that Jesus calls us to is, is yes, for our friends or people like us, but it's also for strangers, anybody in need. He takes it further. Our compassion is also for our enemies. And this compassion is marked by generosity. It's not just flipping some loose change towards someone or or helping someone briefly, partially. There is this radical generosity that models what God has done in our lives. And these these instances of compassion are not one-offs. The idea is to compile them into relationships where possible. It's not always possible, but where possible. As a church, we are seeking out relationships with organizations who are doing great ministry here in our area and around the world. We are looking to build relationships with the leaders and the volunteers and the staff of those organizations But we are also hoping to develop relationships with the people we are showing compassion to. It's not just helping them in that moment, but offering an opportunity to be in relationship with us, with our church, and with our God. It's important that we share the gospel, but I I need to, to clarify that as you go through scriptures, sometimes Jesus would share the gospel by talking about salvation, but sometimes he would share the gospel by talking about and showing dignity And sometimes he would share the gospel by standing up for justice. This is all gospel-based relationships. And that's what he is calling us to. In 1 John chapter 4, dear friends, since God loved us, we ought to love one another. You know, sometimes we can ask the question, we've only got so much resource available to us. Does that person or does that group or... Or does that uh, organization, do they deserve our, our help, our love, our compassion? But God didn't ask that question when he looked at me. As a matter of fact, it was because I didn't deserve his love that he went to such great efforts, which included sending his son Jesus to this earth so that he could die on a cross. That's what the compassion of God looks like. That's what the love that God is calling us to is all about. And finally, we value our heritage in the free Methodist church, lived out through embracing the uniqueness of our movement and being active in our national family. We have a wonderful history as free Methodists. We have a a wonderful history of sharing the gospel And offering an opportunity for people to respond. uh, Of celebrating and holding high the authority of Scripture. We we have an awesome history of 
working for racial justice. One of the reasons we're called Free Methodists is because of uh, the anti-slavery involvement that we had at the beginning of our movement. As well, I love that our history includes both men and women in leadership positions serving at every level of the church. This is a rich history that we can build on and carry on. John Wesley, who is the, the forefather of Methodism, he was renowned for his advocacy of spiritual renewal. He was passionate about worship. He and his brother wrote hundreds of hymns. He was committed to radical evangelism, which included going to places other Christians weren't going, going to people that desperately needed to hear about the love of God. And he also was wonderfully committed to social justice at making his world a better place because God called him to that. And we can look at our heritage and look at our history and look at John Wesley, but there's other men and women and, and there's other churches in, in the free Methodist history, but also in the history of the church, 2,000 years. There's some wonderful things for us to know and build on and celebrate and in some cases get back to. It says in Hebrews chapter 13, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Now look, we're not perfect. Our, our denomination is not perfect. The church certainly has not been perfect. But it's not calling us to imitate everything that we did in our past. It's saying imitate those places where we showed great faith. Imitate those things that demonstrated great courage and commitment. I imitate the things that resulted in people experiencing the love of God. Now, these boundaries, these holy bumpers that are set up we might react a little bit and say, well, what if a boundary prevents us from going somewhere that we want to go? Well, don't boundaries, by their very definition, limit us? But actually, if you think about the bowling analogy from the beginning, actually, boundaries protect us and free us up. Once we have those boundaries in place, we can just enjoy our bishop is fond of, of encouraging us to use sanctified imaginations, but this is only helpful and healthy if we have holy boundaries, holy bumpers, keeping us on track, going in the right direction so we can accomplish the things that we want to accomplish and that he has called us to accomplish. We are free to dream, to adapt, to explore. This morning, our covenant service prepares us and sets us free to live out our unique calling as Trolls Road Church, to share God's love and to give him glory and to keep us out of the gutter. Now, we're not familiar with covenant language as much as we are with contract language, but contracts are very different than covenants. Contracts are legal agreements that need to consider every possible outcome. A covenant is a relational agreement, and it presumes that both parties are enthusiastically committed today to the covenant and moving forward. We know biblically and experientially that God is enthusiastically committed to a covenant relationship with us. The question we asked this morning is, are we enthusiastically committed to that relationship as well? As, as Pastor John was, was sharing about our, our core values, I always get excited as I reflect on these and, and what we uh, care about as a church family. It makes me humbled and encouraged to be part of, of Trolls Road Church. And so we have an opportunity now to be enthusiastically committed together. And we're going to read through uh, some covenant statements together. And I recognize that at home, this might feel a little different than if we were all together. Normally, you hear the voices of others, and we read along together. We can still do that. I'm going to encourage you to, to say these out loud with me as I say them. There's something about speaking out loud that helps when we're making covenants. I also recognize that at home, you may be uh, joining us using different devices. And so if you're not able to see what's on the screen clearly, that's okay. Another way that you can agree with and participate in this covenant we're going to take together is after we've said the words, 
I would encourage you in that case to offer a full-throated amen. We love to hear that in the room. We're going to miss hearing it. But it's another way that you can agree and affirm what we're saying together. And as between each covenant we make, I'm going to leave a brief pause for us to reflect on what we've said, maybe to offer a prayer to God, asking him to help us keep these, these commitments, these covenants that we're making together. So will you join me as we read through and make this covenant? Regarding Jesus, we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the source of salvation as well as king over all creation. We submit to both his authority and his love as we seek to follow and worship him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Regarding transformation, we desire to experience personal, spiritual transformation through our participation with the Holy Spirit. We also commit to praying for and encouraging the spiritual transformation of one another. Regarding the church, we agree to love each other as equal members of the body of Christ. We will demonstrate this love by our faithfulness to our church family through investing in one another, using our time, abilities, and money. Regarding all people, we recognize that all people are created in the image of God and that Jesus makes salvation available to everyone. We will show generous compassion and look for opportunities to engage in relationships for the sake of the gospel, both with people in our community and around the world. And regarding our heritage, we are thankful for and committed to our Canadian Free Methodist heritage. We believe this relationship gives us a healthy context to be an effective church, along with opportunities to assist other churches in their effectiveness. Heavenly Father, help us to keep these covenants that we've made. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful this morning for the wonderful privilege that we have of just being in your presence, knowing that you are here with us. Father, we, in, we come to you and we offer ourselves. You invite us to put on a garment of praise, especially if we're coming to you with a spirit of heaviness. And so we do that. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your mercies that are new every morning, no matter how badly we messed up yesterday. We praise you for your protection from harm and danger this very week that allows us to come together wherever we are to worship you today. We praise you for your guidance that helped us to make good decisions this week when we didn't know what to do. And we praise you for your indescribable love that took you to the cross to die for our sins and for the hope that you give us of being with you forever. Father, we worship and adore you this morning. You've not only invited us to put on a garment of praise, but you've invited us to come to your throne of grace to find mercy in our time of need. And Lord Jesus, our world is in big trouble these days. And Father God, how we need your mercy. Would you be at work to bring healing where there's sickness, peace where there's strife, and comfort where there's pain and grief? And Lord, would you impart wisdom to the leaders at every level while they're making decisions to deal with this pandemic? And then Lord, help us to do our part. Help us to faithfully pray and believe, and not give in to finding fault and passing judgment. 
We want to pray this morning for the Pregnancy Help Center right here in Oshawa. Thank you for the staff and volunteers that daily show the love of Jesus to moms who are choosing to save the life of their babies. Would you strengthen these workers with kindness and patience and goodness as they deal with each individual person and each need? We give you thanks for all of the churches in our neighborhood who proclaim you as Savior and Lord. We pray for guidance for pastors and people as they creatively find ways to impact our community with the truth of the gospel. Help us all to work together to love you more and to love each other better and to reach out in love to our world. Now for a moment we want to focus our prayer on our Charles Road family. Lord, this morning we bring you all who suffer physically, financially, relationally, and perhaps in other ways that we're not aware of. God, you are the all-powerful one who restores and heals and brings hope. We pray that each one would trust you as their need meter in each and every unique situation that they find themselves in. And then, Father, we are so very grateful this morning for the opportunity that we are having to renew our covenant with you. And now as we prepare to gather around your table, would you strengthen us through this act of communion to fulfill these commitments that we've just made, not out of duty, but out of love for you. We ask that you will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as you continue to shape us into the image of your Son. Keep us mindful in all we do that it's all about Jesus and making him known, for it's in his wonderful name that we pray this morning. Amen. of love that's calling There's a chair that waits for you And a friend who understands everything you're going through But she keeps standing
to the table It's nothing he ain't seen In ancient covenants, there were a couple of things that would be common in every instance. One was the presence of blood, either to sign or seal the covenant that was being made. And this was to remind the people involved that this included a life and death reality. These are matters of significance. It was also very common for covenants to finish with a meal, a time of fellowship, acknowledging this new relationship and this idea of acceptance on both sides. And finally, there was celebration. There was singing. There was joy. This morning, as we look at the covenant relationship we have with God, we now turn to the blood of Jesus We now turn to the meal of fellowship that he has invited us to. And it is both a time of of sorrowful remembrance, but also joyful celebration because he is alive. In Ephesians chapter 2, it tells us to remember that at one time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship, foreigners of the covenant and the promise without hope. And without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So this morning as we prepare our hearts for his body and his blood, the bread and the the juice. I'm going to give us an opportunity to reflect on our relationship with God. Our covenant relationship. Sometimes when when we go to someone's house. Remember when we used to do that? And... If you showed up empty-handed, there was that sense of guilt. And and yet often the other person, no, I just wanted you to come. I didn't want you to bring anything. Well, God is saying this morning, I didn't want you or need you to bring anything. You are invited. There was an expensive price for this covenant relationship. But Jesus paid that price and looked after everything. The only thing lacking is a right relationship with God that is now made possible through the cross. And so we celebrate our covenant renewal by spending some time making sure we have a right relationship with God through Jesus. I'm going to read some prayers and I'm going to invite you to respond with Lord have mercy. Heavenly Father, we are guilty of ignoring you. We make our plans and decisions in order to build our own kingdoms rather than yours. Lord, have mercy. Dear Jesus, we are guilty of ignoring your teaching. We struggle to love our friends and family the way you commanded, let alone strangers or enemies. Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, we are guilty of ignoring your leading. We resist, grieve, and quench your powerful work in our lives and miss out on so much. Lord, have mercy have mercy. Why don't you take a moment and just talk to God? Why don't you let the Holy Spirit speak? If there's anything specific you want to confess, or if you simply want to celebrate as you feel the release from your sins, experiencing his great forgiveness. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your forgiveness this morning. We thank you that Jesus washes our sins away, makes us clean, that the Holy Spirit gives us the strength we need to live the lives we were created and called to live. We confess that as people and as a church, we have fallen short. We have rebelled. We have done what we didn't want to do, and we didn't do things we have wanted to do. And yet we come humbly before you and we confess these things to experience your wonderful 
forgiveness. I invite you to read the scripture on the screen with me from Ephesians 1. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Amen. And now that we are in right relationship with God, we can share that peace that we have with God, that peace through Christ with one another. And we've done this a few times already, but I'm going to invite you to pass the peace of Christ. And we have learned the sign language for this. Remember, uh, may the peace of Christ, start at C over your heart, of Christ be with you. Why don't you do that to one another if you're in a room with other people or just do it into the camera and send the peace of Christ to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Before we eat and drink together, I'm going to invite you to to pray with me one more time. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. And then Pastor Tyler is going to come and and lead us in in sharing the bread together. Then Pastor Joan will come and lead us in in sharing the, the wine together. But would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and glory forever. Amen. As we continue to move through the season of Lent, we seek to experience more of Christ who offers us peace that passes all understanding and as, we, as we've just said, a restored right relationship with God. And so here we have this unique opportunity to experience Christ in a unique and powerful way as we worship him in partaking of this meal. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has been given for you, preserve your your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. May this bread sustain and nourish you, body and soul, by faith and with thanksgiving. Jesus said in John 6, 53, that unless we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we have no life in us. We've just symbolically eaten his flesh by partaking of the bread that represents his body. So now we want to symbolically drink his blood by partaking of the wine or the juice that represents his blood. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But before we drink, I'd like us to just consider why Jesus might have directed the disciples to drink wine as a symbol of his blood. Well, first and foremost, by using a familiar commodity, he reminded them daily that his death was what gave them forgiveness for their sins. Our sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament law, the system of cleansing and purification was carried out by priests through the sacrifice of animals. 
But in reality, this Mosaic covenant could not deliver on what it was promised. The sins of the people were not forgiven by the blood of animals. But the ritual did remind them of their sin and help them to look forward to the real Lamb of God that would take away the sins of the world. When we drink the wine and the juice, we remember that Jesus' blood flowed so that we might have complete forgiveness of our sins. And let's not forget that his blood was not swiftly shed. He experienced long hours of torture before he died, and as his blood drained from him, so did his life. And not only does his shed blood cover our sins, but it frees us from our guilt. So if we are no longer guilty in his eyes, then we need no longer condemn ourselves for the sins that God has already forgiven. A second thing is that the shedding of Jesus' blood opens the way for us to freely come before the Father's throne. Under the old covenant, only the priest could enter the Holy of Holies. But now, because of Jesus' blood, we have been cleansed and made pure, so each of us can have direct access to the Father. And then there's one more thing. His blood signifies that he's entered into an agreement with us, a covenant, And of the wine, he says, this is the blood of the new covenant. So repenting and believing his promise to forgive our sin establishes a covenant relationship with him that is sealed by his blood. So when we drink the wine, we're acknowledging that covenant relationship. No longer is the law written on tablets of stone, but it's written on our hearts and on our minds. So by drinking the wine, we're really saying, With the Holy Spirit's help, we will keep God's laws out of gratitude for his forgiveness of our sins. So now let's drink together. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you. Well, our covenant service this morning has been crowned by the Lord's Supper. Together, these two things have given us occasion to look back to the selfless love of Christ and to look inward to our own values and actions. And then finally, to look forward to his return when all who love him will be with him forever. So we can go from here rejoicing in the victory of the cross and covenanting to serve God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourself. Amen.
Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, what a wonderful time together celebrating Jesus. And, and, and this covenant renewal, again, is, a, is part of a, a celebration, is part of a process. And it's also part of many other churches' calendar. Uh, several other, uh, specifically Methodist churches, but all kinds of churches do covenant renewal services. Uh, Methodist churches, though, often share in some similar elements, including uh, a covenant prayer. And so I want to conclude with this prayer that other churches around the world throughout this year will use in their covenant services. And it goes like this, I am no longer my own, but yours, God. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing some of you this afternoon at 245 and the rest of you next Sunday at 1030. Remember, if you want to join us in the building, make sure you, you reserve your spot. Have a great week. Go in peace.